Hi guys, in this video I will be installing the BLV kit on the original Ender 3. The intention of the BLV kit by Ben Levi is for it to be installed on the Ender 3 Pro, which has a 40-40 extrusion for the Y-axis. But as you will see in this video, with minor modifications and minimal additional parts, I was able to make it work for my original Ender 3 with the 20-40 Y-axis extrusion. The installation process for the Z and X axis remains the same, and can be done without any mods. In my previous video, I assembled my Ender 3 frame, the right way. It is absolutely essential that the frame is square and perfectly aligned in order to have smooth motion on the linear rails without any binding. If you have not seen that video, be sure to check it out. Before we begin, consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and learned something new. For the Ender 3 Pro, you are able to install the rail on one side, and the belt will run beside the rail. For the original Ender 3 however, the belt will have to run above the rail. So the first change that we need to make is mounting these belt clamps on top of the plate, as opposed to what is shown here. Otherwise, these clamps will hit the rail, and it will be impossible to mount the plate on the carriage. Here you can see what the assembled Y-axis will look like, and I will explain why some of these modifications are necessary. As I mentioned, these are the belt clamps fixed on top of the plate, and you can see the clearance below was not sufficient. The next challenge was the belt rubbing on the edge of the rail, so I designed and fixed these pieces to add belt guides. They will raise the height of the belt to provide the necessary clearance. Let's dive in to get a better look at how I installed all these parts. These pieces will simply bolt onto the plate as it is already threaded, and the fasteners should be provided with the kit. My kit however came without the fasteners so I had to source my own. You can go ahead and tighten the belt clamps in place, then we can move on to the next step. To fix the belt guide, I had to tap the top hole in the aluminum extrusion on both the front and the rear. This is an M5 tap, and pretty easy to use because aluminum is a soft metal. Now that the extrusions are tapped, we can install the belt guides. You can download them from the link in the description below. I printed them in PLA+, Plus without any supports. You will also need two F623 flange bearings, and a 15mm M3 bolt. The part is designed to be self-threading, so you can screw in the M3 bolt directly, and add the bearings on the bolt. You can even assemble this part after fixing it on the extrusion. You will need one M5 bolt for each side. Length of 15 to 20 millimeters will be sufficient. After installing the belt guides, you can fix the Y-axis motor. For the original assembly, the motor is fixed on the left, but for this installation I had to shift it to the right side in order to get the necessary clearance. One point to note here is that the direction of the motor will need to be reversed, which is simple to do. You just have to flip the connector of the stepper motor. It will not fit as is, so you will need to cut away these plastic guides, but it is completely safe to do so. Next. I will install this aluminum belt tensioner. It is a big quality of life upgrade because it allows tensioning the belt with just the twist of a knob. Also, it provides the necessary clearance required to install the printed belt guides. Then we can fix the Y-axis plate onto the linear rail. Here you have to make sure that you use the correct set of holes, otherwise the bed will be off-center. My kit came with an oversized Y-axis belt which I had to cut down to length. Quick tip here, fix the belt to the plate before you mount it onto the rail. I tried to do it after mounting the plate. While possible, it is very fiddly and can take a lot longer than it needs to. You can install the bearings for the belt guide here, before tensioning the belt to the required amount. This completes the mechanical installation of the Y-axis. Give it a test run, it should be smooth and without any binding. Then we can move on to the X and Z axis installation. Both the X and Z are relatively straightforward and I followed the procedures shared by Ben Levi on his channel. The X motor mount bolts directly onto the existing threads on the extrusion. Then the rear extruder mounting plate goes on and both of them are bolted onto the linear rail carriage. Then I add in the spacers with M4 bolts and nuts. Ideally you should use lock nuts but I didn't have any at hand so I use Loctite Thread Locker. If you don't intend to disassemble your printer again, you should aim to apply the thread locker on all the connections. 
3D printers are always vibrating due to the nature of their operation, and this can cause the bolts to come loose over time. Thread locker will prevent that. For the other side, the mounting method was not clear to me so I used T-nuts. And because I intend to upgrade to dual Z-axis in the future, I will also connect this plate that comes as part of the BLV kit. If you do not intend to upgrade to dual Z, this plate does not have to be installed. Before tightening all the bolts, I am going to check the X-axis extrusion. It should be parallel to the printer base. This is the best time to correct for any misalignments. You can check this by taking measurements on both sides of the extrusion from the base. Both the measurements should be equal. Finally, manually move the gantry the full length of the rails to make sure there is no binding or tight spots. If you have assembled your frame properly and aligned all the extrusions, this is where your efforts will pay off. In my previous video I went over how to assemble the frame and keep it square. Check it out if you have any alignment problems on your frame. Next, we can go ahead and connect the X-axis motor. You will need to use the spacers provided with the kit, and also need longer M3 bolts. To install the X-axis linear rail, you can again use guide pieces available on Thingiverse, but my preferred method is to simply use a vernier caliper. For the MGN-12 rails, the space from the top of the extrusion to the start of the rail should be 4mm. So I will measure 4mm on the caliper, then lock it, and use the end as a guide to align my rail. For the belt tensioner, I will be upgrading it to this one that I bought from AliExpress. It makes your life a lot easier. The rest of the X and Z axis assembly is simple, so enjoy a montage of me building it. The X-axis end stop was taken care of when we mounted the motor for the X-axis. For the Y-axis end stop, the kit comes with this mounting adapter, so I am going to determine the proper position and fix it. Then I am going to move on to the print bed. The original Z-axis mounting bracket could not be used because of the aluminum corner plate that I had installed earlier, but nothing a hacksaw couldn't fix. This is where the power supply is supposed to go, but because I will be installing the dual Z upgrade, the power supply will not fit here, so I will need to figure out another place for it. For the time being, I will just keep it beside the printer. My intention was to upgrade to an SKR board but I decided to test the printer first, so I installed the original board following guides and wiring diagrams from YouTube. Moment of truth. It didn't blow up. That has to be a good sign. So I decided to have some fun by playing this code file on the steppers.
only one thing remaining now. The cover for the electronics could not fit due to the Y-axis rigidity upgrade. But nothing a Dremel couldn't fix. That brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to the channel and leave a like. In the next video I will install the dual Z-axis upgrade and Z-pull rods. So don't miss it.